In this video, take a look at the mouth of that sandwich. You're gonna witness bizarre sandwich creations at the New York State Fair. A meal for a typical person would be one or two grilled cheeses, but that is just the bun of this creation. But first, let's back up. In its over 150 year lifetime, the New York State Fair has gone from a place to promote agriculture to a place pushing out some of the wildest food creations in the history of this great nation. I don't know that I could actually fit my mouth around this. Today, we're not after food on a stick and we're not after fried foods. It is the biggest thing that we sell right here and it's been a huge success at the State Fair. Is it a sandwich? Uh... Today, it's all about those fun fair sandwiches. Oh my gosh, they are not shy, they are not stingy with the lobster. We're going deep, exposing highly unique sandwiches. That is the top of our sandwich. Right here is our base. Conjured up in a fever dream. It's a marinara masterpiece. And born into reality by these visionary fair vendors. Oh, this essentially is our bread today. And it all starts with the master of all things fried. Boom, good morning. Our sandwich journey begins right now with Jim of Fried Specialties. Last time I came here, I tried an onslaught of assorted fried oddities. The fried nutter butter. Oh, wow. Fried pop tarts. Oh, my God. And a fried bacon wrapped Twix. Shut the front door. Now we're shifting into the world of deep fried sandwiches. Well, I started just deep frying sandwiches, deep frying burgers, trying to come up with the next concoction for the fairs. Last year, I started the defibrillator. It's a deep fried half pound burger with deep fried bacon, deep fried cheddar cheese, deep fried cheese curds, deep fried pickles between two grilled cheese sandwiches. Is that what I'm gonna be eating? Well, that's what you got. Oh, wow. The foundation of any exceptional sandwich lies in its bun. And in this case, our buns are two different grilled cheeses. Wow, cheese is already starting to sizzle and melt. Now, the burger patty. But instead of being grilled, it takes a dip in the deep fryer. After 15 minutes, it looks like it's been grilled on a flat top. That's amazing. And if that's not impressive enough, how about deep fried bacon? Wow, look at that bacon getting crispy. I got to say, Jim is opening up a world of possibilities to me. Followed by deep fried cheddar cheese. No breading, no batter, just straight up cheese in the fryer. Then deep fried cheese curds coated in a crispy batter. Guys, this might be the only sandwich for today. I'm not sure I could eat any more sandwiches after this one. There is a lot going on here. And finally, to cut through the heaviness, pickles that are coated in flour and then deep fried. Time for the bill. It starts with a base of a grilled cheese. Next, we have the hamburger patty, a load of bacon, melted half fried cheese right here, a pile of cheese curds pounded on top, place everything inside a boat, and we're ready for the pickles. Wow, that's a lot of pickles. <laughs> Next step, take another grilled cheese, put that on top, that is our top bun. Give it a bit of a cut to make it a little bit more manageable. I can't believe you're not selling this for $20, to be honest. And I gotta say, for structural integrity, this is holding together pretty good. I had a friggin' dessert burrito the other day, it was a disaster, it blew up in my hand. Messy. It's a messy like one. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pickle's good, it's crunchy, it's a little bit sour. I mean, take a look at the backside. That's a nice looking backside. And I'm a connoisseur of backsides. Oh yeah. Oh man. What's wild is a meal for a typical person would be one or two grilled cheeses, but that is just the bun. <laughs> that is wildly greasy. Is there balance? Absolutely not. It's heavy, it's oily, like pretty much every element inside of here is fried, which is amazing to me, because I didn't even know that you could just fry a piece of cheese without flour or batter on it, but he did it. I didn't know you could fry a whole burger patty and have it turn out this good. I mean, look at this bacon. This is like the ideal crisp of bacon. I gotta say, after this, it's gonna be so hard not to go on Amazon and buy a deep fryer. It's so tempting, but it's the worst thing I could do for my house. I gotta be careful. hate carbs, and if you hate convention, this next rebellious state fair sandwich is for you. A creation you won't find anywhere outside of Tiki Turtle. I am with Jim. Put her there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as always. This beach bar themed stall has been around for 20 years. It's the home of deep fried mac and cheese, the deep fried Reuben, and their barbecue dessert known as the pork and potato parfait. All that sounds amazing, but I'm here for the pickle witch. The brains of the place, Lana, her and her daughter, they're very clever people. And it was a hot, hot day during the summer. The fair can get real hot. You know, pickles are awful refreshing. And she started experimenting with some different things. And she says, let's try it. They're taking off. People like them. Plus, we're trying to get away from the carbs and bread and this and that more and more. My big question is, is a pickle witch really a sandwich? Well, I guess that's subjective answer to that. Yeah, I would like a hard line answer from you. I want to start some controversy. I'm going to say this. Yeah? I am. Sean? He's about to pickle it up. Turns out they have three different pickle witch options. The Italian, the ham, and the turkey. We're starting with the Italian. It's time to wake up. 
Oh, he peels out the inside. Hit it with some mustard. From here, it's all about the American cheese going on top. First, a hefty load of salami. On top of the salami, a pile of ham, some nice pepperoni discs. Tomatoes, top it with another pickle. The ham, I think, will be more straightforward than the Italian. So tomato slices go on next, top it with a pickle. And our final pickle witch, the turkey. Hit it with some tomato and top it with a pickle. Cut it in half carefully and the big reveal. Here they have three varieties and they all come in at eight bucks, which is wild because I think the Italian looks the most amazing with three different types of meat. So I'm gonna build up to the Italian. First, I'm gonna start with the turkey. I gotta say, that ain't bad. Actually, mustard is the perfect pair to the pickle. They complement each other very well. The pickle, obviously, very sour, but there's a load of meat in here, too. Next, we have ham. Mmm. The big difference in this one is it tastes like ham. If I had to put my finger on one thing, it would be that. You know, people are always asking me, oh, you don't like cucumbers, how come you like pickles? It's completely different. For those who don't know, a pickle has been pickled. You're basically eating brine. I mean, a cucumber is like 99% water anyways. It just starts with evil water and it gets replaced by a delicious, salty brine. On to the Italia. This is the one I'm looking forward to the most. I mean, that is a pile of meat. Oof, da. Mmm. This one's legit. What's tough is, I'm not sure I could call this diet food. I mean, it is low carb, but I mean, that's like 500 calories of meat right there. Here's the verdict, very creative, I love it. This Italian one is my favorite by far. Super meaty, all in all, eight bucks at the State Fair. Here, prices can get wild. Anybody can afford an $8 pickle sandwich. And if they can't, I'm gonna start a foundation so they can. Don't ask me to follow up on that. Our next sandwich is a cardiac conundrum, a flavor fiesta, and a reason to schedule your next checkup all in one. And if that's not intriguing enough, this place boasts its very own portable, specialized rotating oven. Inside of a food truck, this thing can go on the highway. How is this street legal? But the real question is, why would a sandwich require an oven? Let's find out. We have come to an install, it's called It's a Unica Thing. I'm with Charlie, put her there. Nice to meet you. What's up? Utica has made quite a name for itself in the world of Italian-American cuisine. I'm not a New Yorker. I'm from Minnesota. It's confusing. I looked it up. Utica is a city, but what's so special about Utica? You know, we feature some great things that started in the city of Utica. Utica chicken riggies, Utica greens, tomato pie. That's what my hometown is known for, and we're here to talk about it. Personally, I've never tried these regional delights, but in mere moments, I'll devour them all simultaneously in a sandwich they call the everything. I'm here with Vincenzo behind me, son of the owner, and he's gonna be walking us through the preparation of this sandwich. Now, it starts with a tomato pie. For me, I was thinking a literal pie crust filled with tomato. It's not that. It's essentially a pizza crust with tomato on top of it. Is that right? Exactly. Their Utica tomato pie showcases their homemade marinara sauce and Pecorino Romano cheese, lovingly nestled on a hearty bread crust. That is the top of our sandwich. We'll be back for that. Right here is our base. Next, Utica greens. A delicious mix of escarole, prosciutto, salami, and a great cheese mixture. From here, he tosses in rigatoni pasta that's already caked with their creamy Utica chicken riggy sauce. Now, the cheese, pecorino, and mozzarella on top, and it's time to bake. And away it goes. Bye! Look at that melty beauty right there. Hit it with some more pecorino, tomato pie on top, a little bit more cheese, and that... That's complete. It's ready to go. Let's go try it out. I've not been on the East Coast very much at all. I didn't even think that pie and pizza. It's got tomato sauce on there. That is our bread. That is our bun. But then underneath, we've got mozzarella cheese, rigatoni, greens, and then more pizza on the bottom. Oh no, look at what a casualty. Amazing pizza, the pie itself very nicely done. They must have a good dough recipe. And you know, New York, they got better water than other parts of the country when it comes to making pizza. Here you have some of those greens. I've never had this type of green before. It's like a lava stream. It just keeps slowly, slowly dripping down. It's giving life to a new creation. I just want to really experience these riggies. I'm no etymologist, I'm no detective. I have a feeling that riggies comes from the word rigatoni. I don't think it's a whole different category. Or maybe it is. Mmm, that's a really good sauce. Wow, tomato-y, there's some chicken, just oodles of cheese. This is very satisfying. Man, that is one unique sandwich experience. For $16, you're basically getting two slices of pizza and pasta all in one. I guess some vegetables too. We moved on to our next meaty location. I'm sick of land animals. Right now, I want some seafood. Welcome to Bold Coast Lobster Company, where they bring the flavors of the main coastline straight to your plate. From scallops and bacon skewered on a stick to their famous lobster taco. 
there is a sea of menu options, but my heart is set on the one and only lobster roll. What is the secret behind a good lobster roll? Because the best lobster roll I've ever had happened to be in Austin, Texas. Good lobster rolls just come from great lobsters. We use everything fresh, we don't do anything to it, no fluff, it's either chilled with mayo or warm with butter. When it comes to their lobster rolls, you've got two mouth-watering options. You can go for the main style, where the lobster is chilled and coated in mayo, or if you're like me, you'll stay loyal to the Connecticut style, served hot and swimming in a sea of melted butter. But today, just for me, they're turning this Connecticut roll up a notch. Right now we're in the kitchen, there's a ton of action going on and a ton of seafood too. Kate is behind me, whipping up a couple of lobster tacos. They look amazing. We're gonna get started with our lobster roll. It all begins with the lobster boiling away in butter. And then we have our bun right here. They are not shy, they are not stingy with the lobster. There's a lot that goes inside. Now, something they don't usually do, but they're doing for me right now, a couple strips of bacon on top, just to make it a bit more heart healthy. For freshness, a little bit of lemon, and that is complete. I'm gonna try to squeeze a little bit of lemon on there. It's a lot of heaviness. You wanna give it a little bit of a kiss of citrus. Very nice bread quality. The bacon is super thin and crispy, and then you just got bad chunks of buttery lobster in there. I gotta say, after this, they might do an ad bacon option for a few bucks because that is incredible. Pigs should basically have fins and gills. Somehow they pair perfectly with anything that swims in the ocean. Do you like scallops? Put bacon around it. Do you like crab? Have it with bacon. Shrimp? Wrap it with bacon. Lobster? Pile on some bacon. Oh. Yo. If you like seafood, this is one of the best things you can put in your mouth. It is so delicious and meaty and satisfying. There's nothing like it. And I gotta say, I've had a lot of fried food today. It can weigh on your heart a bit, especially if you're not walking enough. If you need something more refreshing, uplifting, light, uh, try this. Finally, for our grand finale, prepare to indulge in the guilty pleasure of guilty pleasures. I am with Monica. We are at cheating. Alivero's fine food at the fair. Alivero, is that a family name? Yes, it is. That's my maiden name. With 25 years of winning flavors under their belt, they've mastered the art of fair food. Aside from the usual suspects like chicken tenders, onion rings, and sausages, their cheeseburger with liquid cheese sauce is a real crowd pleaser. Then there's the double patty burger, loaded with onion, bell pepper, and a slice of American cheese. But that is not a sandwich. I've tried a lot of different animal proteins so far today. We've had food from the sea, we've had cows, we've had pigs. I have not had any chicken. So I'm turning my focus to their Alivero special, a fried chicken sandwich with an Italian touch. So I actually have a cook who is not Italian. He makes it right from scratch. Their own marinara sauce. We get raving reviews on it all the time. It speaks for itself. We are in the kitchen of Alivero's right now. Let's get started. Step one, dig into the freezer, grab out a frozen cutlet, drop that inside the fry basket, and we will see you in eight minutes. Today, we're gonna be using not a pickle, not a slice of pizza, but a Kaiser roll. There it is, the marinara. <laughs> Next, put on the chicken, and then it gets another saucing. Trim right here, bring in the Parmesan. Bell pepper, it's gonna head on top. Oh my gosh, there's a fourth saucing occurring at this moment. Now even more Parmesan. Tap it, toothpick, and right there is our complete chicken alivero. Alivero special, chicken alivero fried. That's a lot of words. I think they said alivero twice. The bread is really soft. It's like it's sticking its tongue out at you. You can see some of the chicken, some of the sauce, some of the pepper right here. Ooh, let's go. I gotta tell you something, that ain't no Applebee's marinara. That's like marinara with heart. Just really a depth of flavor. It's really, really nice marinara. And then that, the bell pepper offers a little bit of sweetness too. This is really impressive. A great chicken cutlet is juicy. It's a little bit crunchy on the outside. So you really have this blend of textures, which I talk about texture a lot because food should have more than one dynamic. Yes, flavor is part of it, but there's also presentation and there's texture. There's the way it feels in your mouth. This is stunning. Chicken sandwiches can be tough because oftentimes it can be uninspiring. But this, this is the opposite. They took a beautiful, simple piece of meat and they really brought it to the next level. The chicken itself, amazing, but with those piles and layers and layers of marinara, even better. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos, showcasing the most unique street food from around the country. Here they're serving three different varieties of sandwiches. You can get ham, turkey. So here they're serving three varieties of sandwich, a pickle sandwich. Sorry. See, I'm even. I'm not perfect all it's the time. Okay. What the heck? <laughs> My chair just fell down. I got shorter. Oh no! What's happening? 
So the normal price of this. So the. Cool. Ladies mad at her kid. I keep ruining everyone's fun by talking about calories. Sorry guys. I'm just trying to eat all this hair food without becoming, you know, overly diabetic. I don't mind being a little bit diabetic, but I don't want to walk around with a satchel full of syringes. Boom! Today we ate five different sandwiches. Five extremely unique, innovative, creative sandwiches engineered by mad food scientists. It was an amazing experience. All of them I love and adore. All in all, when it comes to innovation, my favorite sandwich was the defibrillator with the fried everything. And then when it comes to just a pure flavor, bold color with their lobster roll with bacon on top. It was stunning, it was delicious. It was something I would definitely come back to this fair to try again. But otherwise, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace.